All right, howdy boyos and welcome back to Wargame Red Dragon. And in this video, I'm going to be taking a look at the Finnish faction, which is the second nation in the Reds DLC for Wargame Red Dragon, which should come out in a few hours after this video is released. I'm releasing this video on December 1st, and it should also come out on this day. So keep an eye on the Steam page. It'll be somewhere in the DLC section, no doubt. So. We've already looked at Yugoslavia, and I will link that in the description below. And the other nation that's added is Finland. Now, Finland obviously comes as a standalone nation, but it also is part of the Baltic Front Coalition together with Poland. A lot of people are like, why? Why is that a thing? Honestly, I don't know. I'm assuming like, it's the, like the name implies the Baltic Front, you know, they are the first line basically of defense if you don't count Eastern German. Uh, because it's not like that big of a it wasn't that big of a landmass and I guess Poland and Finland are like the first real like Blocks of opposition for red for in Europe. So maybe that's why they're called the Baltic front. That's what I'm assuming anyway um, And also because they're on the Baltic Sea, but let's not get into too many details So we're gonna pick Finland and instead of going through the arsenal or the armory in the deck making thing I figured I'd go this way because um one thing I keep forgetting is that when you go into the armory over here, some stuff uh, gets lost or some stuff just uh, gets added and I kind of get confused. <laughs> I don't want to make these videos too confusing. So we're just going to jump into Red 4 Finland and we're going to go no type and no era. So let's go. Um, I think Navy is not a thing like I wasn't able to show you in the... Uh, Yugoslavia video because there is no like specific Finnish units as you can see these are all you know just greater red for stuff like Chinese or Russian ships like where is the Sovereign and, and, and the Lululoy so there's nothing to show in the Navy tab people are like oh my god you didn't show us the Navy tab well there's nothing to show you so just let's uh, get that out of the way first um, I already mess mentioned also that uh, new seat that is a buff for CV choppers. CV choppers now are still the same points, you know, 100, 200, 10, 120 at the most, I believe. But they actually get good optics, very good optics, which means they can kind of double as a recon chopper. Not saying you should buy them in that role, but you can have you can use them as a CV recon helicopter, which actually, you know, I can see that being kind of useful. But that's just something I didn't want to forget to mention. So we're starting at the, obviously, the logistics tab under the BTR50YVI. Uh, really quickly, though, I should mention this. If you're Finnish or you know how to pronounce Finnish, again, like the kind of same disclaimer under the Yugoslavia video, I'm going to rape your, 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 your language and um, I'm going to mispronounce stuff. I'm so sorry, but... As far as I thought, under the infantry tab for the Yugoslavians, it was hard. But there's some really insane ones here, so you'll 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 see what happens. Anyway, the BTR fifty YVI. It's got the NSV machine gun, and this reminds me of the. Is this not the BTR fifty or BTR sixty PK? Uh, actually, it is a BTR fifty, but this looks like the BTR fifty I've seen in Czechoslovakia and Poland as a transport unit or as just CV units. It has two armor in the front, one side armor, very slow off-road. Um, you know, this is your, your basic kind of little bit more armored CV. It even has amphibious capabilities. So, you know, if you don't want to have a quick CV, but a little bit more of an armored CV, even the stupid machine gun, which might be able to, you know, fend off one squad of infantry, then this is your pick over the, the Jeep CV. Then the BMP-1K Copa, which probably means something like Command post or command something, I'm going to assume, um, has the 73 millimeter. It's the BMP-1 opposite of 73 millimeter. Um, one more frontal armor than the BTR-50. Little bit more amphibious speed and a little bit more speed off-road. Again, you know, do you want to go for speed and stealth or do you want to go for a, a vehicle that's not going to be necessarily... Well, I say stealth, but I mean like like size-wise, because this is obviously a medium-sized vehicle versus a small-sized vehicle. 
Um, so do you want to go for you know speed and, and and agility, or do you want to go for a vehicle that you know isn't as fast but can defend itself and actually take a shot or two from you know like let's say a mortar or something? So that's your choice. And then we have the Gaz sixty nine Kappa, no Copa, but I'd like to say Kappa because it's a Gaz sixty nine, which looks absolutely fantastic. It looks like a Volvo or something. Um, very good off road speed. Obviously, good onward speed because it's a wheeled vehicle. Nothing else, you know, it's just your standard wheeled CV, you know, the 100 point Jeep CVs. And then we have the XA 180 Copa, uh, or Copa, Copa, which is just a bigger version of. I don't see. Okay, and the only. Okay, I can see because it, it has 10 kilometers more speed off road than the 100 point one, and it has uh, better autonomy, way better autonomy. And it has obviously one armor on every side, and even has a gun. So, do you want to go for speed, or do you want to go for, well, l less speed but less points? So, I, I guess that's kind of the options they're giving you here. And then we have the comment. Oh God, commento ju, comment, commento juki, juke. Com I don't even know how to pronounce that at all. There, the one thing about the finish is that their uniforms are actually really cool. I like how they don't actually have helmets, but they wear like these these smock kind of things. And that's like a thing on most of the standard infantry for the uh, for the finish. The Kementuki have the RK62 and the KK62, uh, which is just you know their machine gun, and then they come in the truck, which this is look like a Finnish Ural. We have a BTR60 PB, the XA180, the XA185 KT, which that looks like a LAV 25, that's a, isn't that an LAV turret? Like the 20, I mean, it's got a 30 mil in it, but that reminds me of the LAV turret that you would see in like the, on the LAV, like the ones that Gonzo actually used to, used to work on in the, in the Marines. And then we have the BTR 50 and then we have the MI8P and the Super Puma, which, oh, that's a beautiful helicopter. Grandsbewakingsvazendit, which means as much as, like, um, this is actually very close to Dutch. This means uh, uh, border um, border patrol or, or uh, border bo border guard, and I don't know what that word means. But this, this literally means border and guarding or guard. So, interesting. I actually really like the Puma. It's a very beautiful chopper. I, I don't really know why you would want such a... I don't know, differently and obviously colored helicopter, but it's a Super Puma and it does 300 kilometers an hour. So I can kind of say, you know, I just like the look of the Pumas and it's cool. I can actually read this to a degree. So moving on to the MI4 Copa, it's you known the MI4, the finished one. It's got a machine gun, like I said, it's got a buff because it actually has very good optics now, um, but it's still a, a slow chopper, you know, 180 kilometers. It's. Something I would not really take in a deck unless, you know, you're playing like a pre-1980s or something. And then we have the T-55 Copa, which is, again, a command tank. The T-72 Copa, 4160 points. Um, you know, it's got some good stats on the gun, at least on the range and on the accuracy. It's still 160-point tank, so, well, there's that. Then we have the FOB, which there's nothing we have to show you there. The MI-8P KPI, which has 1,500 liters of supply, 250 speed, 35 points. It's just your standard MI8 resupply helicopter in the Finnish colors. This looks real. Oh my god, yes. The Terra 865 BM KPI with 500 liters of supply. This thing looks beast as fuck. That is awesome. I, I don't see... Well, for five more points, you do get... Well, this is... A, okay, this wins. I just realized this thing is freaking amphibious. That is amazing. That is absolutely fantastic. I would make a deck with these things just to see people like, oh, what are ghost trucks gonna do? And then you fucking drive along the water. Oh shit, that's that's actually awesome. So we have an amphibious logistics truck at 25 uh, kilometers an hour amphibious with 10 points with 500 liters of supply and an 800 liter of supply, 15 point, the SA-150 KPI, which isn't amphibious, I love, but that that is the best unit so far, in my opinion. We're going to skip the infantry, like I always like to do, because it's probably one of the bigger tabs and also one of the scarier tabs, looking at all the freaking names. The support tab. Ooh, we have a Finnish Pongay. 
uh, or Ponjay. I never knew how to pronounce that. With the V600P missile. So this is basically, you know, oh god, those missiles look really look a lot bigger than on the Ponjay anyway. Um, the Edo 79. Radar guided, you know, fires two missiles, pretty bad accuracy, however. So, if you're lucky, one of these missiles hits, and you do do a lot of damage to a plane or a chopper. But, yeah, 45% accuracy. And if you take a hardened unit, you get 16%, so you get up to 61%. So, I mean, you can take five hardened, and then the 61% might make it worth using. I, That's what I would say, but... Then we have the Ito 96, which is a buck, radar guided, four missiles, 65% accuracy, and then, is that an increase in range? No, it's not. Okay, well, the, the range stays the same, but obviously you gain accuracy, and you, oh, well, you're also talking a little bit more autonomy, but obviously it's bigger versus medium. Um, well, I mean... It depends. Do you want, like, quick anti-air cover? You can use this thing for 150 points because it's cheap as shit. And you can get 10 of them unhardened, which is not great, but it's a, a cheap, like, you know, plane defense system. And, or you have the Ito 96, which you only get one card of, but five or four. But they're obviously, like, you're more, I guess... You, like, you'll probably want to keep these alive a little bit longer because they're worth 85 points versus 55 then the Ito or Ito 86, which reminds me of one of the units I've seen earlier, which is just the Stinger. Well, it's actually not a Stinger. It's an Igla, but it looks like Stingers. Um, or remind me of a Stinger thing from um, Arma. It's an Igla platform on a bad bed, the back bed of a truck. 10 rounds, 24, 50 meters. It's not that terrible for the accuracy. I mean, it's a, it's a truck with 100 kilometers off-road speed with 150 obviously on road so i mean it's a decent and like chopper to turn at 25 points it's rather big though hang on is it big i mean its size says medium but it just feels big to me it, it's it's not a small unit but i mean this is like this is a decent anti-helicopter unit especially because you can get, just get 10 hardened and just push them around in some places in the forest and you still have 56 percent accuracy so half of your shots should kind of hit, and then it's going to be annoying. It's just going to, you know, stun a chopper and, you know, weaken it or just make them pull their choppers back. So it's kind of like a chopper deterrent. And then we have the 90-point. That's an increase. Holy shit. The 90-point Ito 90 with the... Ooh, the Crotal. So this is the Crotal missile system from the Frenchies. Um, these are very good anti-chopper launchers, 3,300 meters plus. They are radar guided, 6% accuracy, 6 HE power, very good off-road speed, good on-road, well, it's, I should stop saying that because it's always going to be on good on-road speed if it's wheeled, sorry. Uh, very good autonomy, so you can have these guys drive around, and since they're good on uh, off-road speed, you can just have them drive around and... Um, you know, put them in the forest, put them on edges of forests. This is a very good unit. Since it's got eight missiles too, there's kind of a um, autonomy to it. So you can put it in the forest and not worry too much about the ammo. Uh, plane range leaves to be desired, maybe a little bit more, but this is mainly an anti-chopper unit, obviously. Then we have some ZSUs, the ITPSVSU-57-2, which uh, we have seen before in, I cannot remember which country it has, but I think it's North Korea, I'm not really sure. It's a very big 57mm round firing AA gun, very bad accuracy, but when this thing hits, it's gonna fuck your day up with that suppression and the fact that you're firing 57mm rounds you don't want to get hit by this thing. If you do, your chopper is in all kinds of trouble. But, you know, it's more like a suppression weapon for choppers because it's the 50% accuracy. So, eh. And then we jump to the ITPSV Marksman. Ooh, they actually get the Marksman from the British. The Marksman rear guided 60.35 twin barreled stabilized. Okay, so this, is bait. this can also dr shoot while driving at a good pretty good stabilizer at 45 percent you can only get one card though so that's kind of the issue so far so you can only get one card of these you can actually get two of these that's, a, that's, a, that's actually very impressive but you can get one card of these um you know use them to protect convoys or more important routes because they're not going to 
gun a plane down. I always, I don't really like auto cannons or just planes unless you spam like three or four of them. But this thing is going to destroy a chopper at that range. It's just out of prime ATGM range for some helicopters, but you're in range of most most choppers and you have good accuracy, a stabilizer so you can be on the move, and you actually have radar guidance. Then moving on to the PSH-74, which is, is a Gvodzika. Nothing really to look at. We've already looked at like multiples. Well, we've already looked at this in the Yugoslavian tech tree. It's a, it's a Gvodzika. It has the ability to go you know close range, but... Looking at these stats, I don't know why you would ever want this, besides for the good HE damage or HE power. Uh, moving on to the Tilak 91, 152mm gun, 30,000m range, decent dispersion, you know, nice HE power. Um, it's got a... doesn't have that many rounds, but it's autonomous to a degree. Uh, the RAKH 76, this looks like a BM-21 grad, just gonna fire... This, oh, with cluster munitions, though. Very low AP power at 3. Um, Decent-ish range. Lower-ish dispersion. Um, this is actually an interesting unit, because I think usually they fire at 7 AP power, but they fire, like, less rockets. So that's interesting. Then the RAKH-89. Oh, wow, that looks amazing. It's a napalm rocket truck with 80 rounds. That's a lot. Again, meh, meh range, but good dispersion. And last but not least, the RAKH-91. I love RAK. It's probably like Rakets and... Ra I'm assuming it's going to be like Rakets how beats and then Finnish. Because I just obviously said it in German. I like Rakets how... And then Finnish for how beats whatever. Uh, like Rocket Howitzer. And then we have a 220mm, 35,000m, decent dispersion. Not what? 11 HE power? Are you kidding? I have not seen that before. Am I stupid? That's something new. Is that is that a real number? Isn't that supposed to be a lot lower? I I don't play word game enough to actually know. That seems like an insane number of damage. Holy shit. I mean, you don't have that much missiles, but that's that's still pretty bot. Oh my god. All right. Anyway, um, the Sergey at fifteen points, which is a ZU on the back of a Ural. Um, Again, <laughs> I mean, I'd, I'd use the Ito over the Sergei because you're actually firing, I don't know, like, yeah, it's kind of iffy. 2450 meters with 15 accuracy. I mean, I don't know. I don't really like, I'd never really use this vehicle. Unless, again, you're using something like pre-80s and you can pick this because of 68, but I don't really see why I'd like this at all. And then we have the Sergei mod, which I'm assuming such that means modern or something. It increases the... Okay, it's, it's just a different truck. So it increases also the range by two almost 200 meters. Increases increases actuary, actuary, accuracy, holy shit, that's hard word to say, by over 100% from 15 to 35%. So that's, that's an okay number. But I still feel like 30 points for a... A, an auto cannon. I mean, at that point, you can use it against infantry. But I don't know, man. Uh, I don't really know. I don't. I don't really like these like very fragile trucks. The Talak eighty four or Talak, thirty five thousand meter range, good HG power, decent dispersion, able to use the gun at short range with good accuracy actually for a gun firing it that way. Decent AP power, so you, 12, that, what, what does this have? One. You can use this thing as an SPG, if necessary, at 12 frontal um, armor. Downside is you only have 15 shots for for doing it that way. You do have some autonomy because it's 45 rounds, and the fuel autonomy is also pretty damn bad for this thing. So you're not going to be able to use it as a gun that much because you'll need fuel like half the way probably. Then the Telak, 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 Telak RH-66, 160mm mortar, almost, it's got a, a above 9,000m range, good dispersion, good HE power, semi-autonomous -autonom on ammo, uh, but this is a beast. That's actually a really interesting unit. I think that might be the biggest unit 
mortar in the game, considering I believe the base I've seen so far is a 107 on like those M113s. But I might be wrong there. But this is this is this actually looks like a pretty interesting unit, especially because you can get it as mechanized. Then the Tilaker, Tilaker, Tilaker. I can't say that word. Tilaker, 71 with the 82 millimeter mortar again on the bed of the truck that can be amphibious. And the 40.1, which is on the BTR D chassis, I believe. The one that's like has a couple of machine guns on it. Again, amphibious. It's got a 120 millimeter mortar and a little bit more range. Uh, also, you have some more uh, dispersion, more damage, more suppression, but obviously, you lose some RPM. So, do you want to have bigger shells further or, sh or smaller shells closer? But, you know, uh, uh, you, like, you know what I mean. Then, tanks. Not that much choice. We have the Charioteer, which is a 84 millimeter gun on a Cromwell chassis. Um, pretty, pretty good, but it's only 50 points, and this thing was good in World War II. Cannot really see it being of much use at this point, maybe as a final stand defense thing, pre-80s deck or if you're really looking to be a troll. Um, but again, War Games seems to, or Eugen seems to tickle me and make me really demand a World War II War Game, because again, we're adding World War II stuff. The T-55A, 25 point tank. The T-55M Mati with, uh, ooh, do, 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 same, oh, holy shit, okay. That is interesting. Are you seeing that? Okay, so it's for mechanized, armored, motorized. So even a motorized gets X to a tank. You can get two cards of hardened. You can get 24. What is it? Hang on. Hardened was what? 16? An 86% accurate gun. Okay, stabilizer of 50%. We're not talking about that right now. Seven frontal armor means this is a paper tank glass cannon thing. But with 86% accuracy while standing still, at 22, 75 meter range, that is ridiculous. That is awesome. This is a great, and I love those T-55 tanks because they look so weird and so Russian. That is awesome. 86% when using the, you get 24 of these fucks as a motorized too, which is pretty good. Then we have the T-72 M1 under armored, support, and mechanized. It's your standard T-72 M1, you know, it just has finished markings on it. This is the T-72 M1 P... Uh, I... 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 70% accuracy, 23 AP power, 40 stabilizer. <laughs> a bit low on the frontal armor, I believe, for a 120 point tank. But... You oh it's only one card. Oh damn that sucks. And then last but not least, which I think looks like a modern IS3 and looks fucking a beast, is the T72 M1 mod, or I'm assuming that's that's modern. 21 frontal armor, 70% accuracy again. It's the only case, okay, so basically you upgrade the M1 PAIV from a Decent tank to a beast of a tank. Only you can get two of them, though, sadly enough, because of the cards. You can only get one card of two or one card of one veteran. But this thing looks fucking amazing. And this this looks really sexy. 21 frontal armor. It's basically the same stats, but you upgrade the side to, from 7 to 10, 3 to 5, and 2 to 4. So this is a very nice-looking tank. Bit of a shame, because I feel like... Playing Armored Sweden, or sorry, Armored Finland's gonna be stupid. Hang on, what's this? You can, if you play Armored, you can get all of these. So you can have two of these. You can have two of these. Actually, let's get one of these rid of, because I don't know if you can get both of those. Two of these, and then you can have two. You can have two of these. Okay, yeah. so if you play Armored Finland, you can get everything. Two of, minus one chair tier, but I don't really know if you even want those. So you can have all the good tanks that you want. Um, and these T-55s, I mean, you can just spam tanks, and when you see 38 T-55s, I don't know if you can kill them all in time, especially not if you mix them with these T-55 Maddies in between and have them stop while these guys are moving up, 
So when they're in range with 70 accuracy and 70, 17 AP power, that's that's good. Especially if the enemy cannot really see the difference between these guys really quickly. We'll just start you know, engaging the 25 point ones because they're closer. Then we have Recon with the Alouette 2. Uh, I wish this could land on the water. I mean, it's supposed to, but it looks amazing. The Alouette 2 and the Jet Ranger both are obviously Recon. We have Very Small with exceptional spawning with 220 kilometers an hour. And we have Very Small with 185 speed with very good optics. Um, hmm. I mean, I like having exceptional recon. Uh, I don't know why. I just like having the ability to, you know, call in a chopper and immediately see as much as I can. Um, then again, I guess there's also people that like just maybe spamming them because they're only 35 points versus 60. And, you know, they also look fucking baller. But I don't know. I, I don't really know which one. I always just get the more expensive one because I like spending points on recon because it's very important in this game. Then the BMP-1TJJ. The Conqu Ooh, 12 Concours missiles. If you pick a Harden, you get plus 16% accuracy. So you go up to 6... Pardon me. 61% accuracy with 20 AP power. It... Amphibious, three frontal armor, good optics. I mean, this is more of a, uh, it's hard to say. I mean, this thing will spot, but good. But I i feel like, what is this? Is this, okay, it's also good, but that's just, oh, what? Are you kidding me? That's a BMP with a 30 millimeter Bushmaster gun on it. That is amazing. That is probably cooler than the 73 Grom with the Concours on it. It kind of depends. Do you want to fight choppers and infantry? Or do you want to fight tanks or armored vehicles at long range with ATGMs? So that's going to be your pick between these two. Oh, God. Okay. Here we have the Irikoizrea Jikari. Jikari. Erikoziriajikri. I'm just gonna say that I'm gonna call them Eric's because fucking Eric. They have the ooh, these are a recon force to be ooh, 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 ooh. These look like TMPs. Jatimetek. They have the Apilas, which the French Rima have. They have the Ikla M. So they obviously lack a machine gun. But they are basically like the SAS teams with a AT launcher and an AA launcher. And with good stats. I mean, you only get a couple of missiles for the Igla and a couple of missiles for the Apilas. But it's a their 10-man squad. They're elite. You get AA and AT and you get good... Oh my god, that's insane. You can get them in Zill 157s. Actually, this is... This is, is this a year old? This looks like an older year old. Then we have BTR 60 PBs, the XA 180s, the XA 185 KTs with these uh, 20 or actually 30 mm Bushmasters on it. The MAIP, MA, MI 8Ps, not MA, MI 8Ps, and a Super Pumas, which does end up to be a 55 point unit. You only get one of these fucks, but Jesus, that is. that This is a good unit. I can see this being a very good unit to flank and doodle around, even though I don't really know. Why this guy is carrying an RPK, whereas they're not supposed to have them. Then again, this is still a, you know, a WIP, like a work in progress version. This obviously isn't the released version, but that is uh, interesting that he has an RPK and this doesn't have that. But uh, moving on to the GAD 69A, it's the recon version of the CV version we found earlier. Very good optics, seven uh, trained under 25 points. It's a good recon. It's got no armor. It's got no armament, but I can see this being interesting. Here we have a first for war game ATV mounted recon. 80 kilometers off road, 150 on road. Uh, very small, very good optics, very small size, and an autonomy that's okay ish. The thing is that these guys are very, very, very rough to spot. And. I just like they're adding Finnish ATVs because I actually read about the fact that the Finnish use ATVs to do border patrols and stuff. So it's kind of cool they're adding this as a unit. It looks just fucking derpy as shit. 
Moving on, we have the PT-76. Not going to spend too much time on this one because I've seen it in literally Israel and the Yugoslavians too. Then the T-55 Peon PSV, which looks amazing with that ERA on the fucking turret. For 65 points, you can get two cards of Trainer, two kinds of Hardened. It's 70% accuracy. It is 10 armor. Again, a very interesting unit here, which has the ability to... It also has very good optics. This is a very good unit in conjunction with these T-55 Matties, which have a little bit less armor, but have the same stats overall with 70% accuracy. What's AP power in this, guys? <gasps> also 17. So... That's a very good combination of units there. These recon tanks with the T-55 Maddies earlier, it'll be very interesting. And then we have the Sissy Infantry, which they look like... Are they trolling me? These look like the World War II uh, field moots uh, the, um, that the Germans used to have. I don't know the designation, M38 or something. They use the... Oh my god, war game, why? They use the Suomi KP, which is a... I think that's the gun that the Russians base the PPSH on. I always get different comments in the comment section. Either the Finnish copied the Russians or the Russians copied the Finnish, but that doesn't really important. The thing is that we're again adding a World War II weapon to a fucking faction in DLC. So I'm saying it right now, calling it on this video. Mark the time before 2017. So before next year is over, there's going to be one out of two things. A, an announcement by Eugen that they're going to be releasing a completely new war game, which I kind of doubt, and it's going to be World War II, or which I very much actually believe in now, and I'm going to probably be put away as a retard or a crazy person. 2017 will see Eugen announce, not release, but announce... A World War II DLC for Wargame Red Dragon, which will include, I don't know, let's say 10 World War II style Europe maps, and they will include like Germany, Russia, and America. I'm calling it right now. The stuff that is, I mean, of course, we don't have Tigers, we don't have Panzer Force, but just the stuff that they're showing and they're just teasing my, they're just teasing me with it. It's, I, I don't believe them anymore. I, I just called it right now. Next year, within the next year, they're going to announce a World War II war game DLC with two to three nations. I'm calling it right now. Mark my words. Anyway, with that being said, we have the Raika RPG, which looks good accuracy, good AP power, low range though, which sucks. They do get a Dragonov, which is interesting to have a 10-man shock train unit with a Dragonov. And an, and an RPG, but then again, they have close range SMGs, so I don't really know. Put these in like a town and have the S3D, like no scope people or something? I have no I have no clue. The Zil 157, the B Trace XCP, I mean, it's all the same vehicles the Super Puma and the MI 8P and the XA, K, XA 185 KT with the 30 mil on it again. Moving on to the vehicle tab of the BTR 50 Vigilant or Vigilante or Vig Vigilant, Vigilant. Said 35% accuracy, six missiles, 2100 meters, 20 AP power. For just 15 points though, this can be a good unit because you can get a card of Hardened, which means they're 51% accurate, accurate for 15 points. I mean, you're a bit on the low end of the range and I don't know how good that's going to be. But if you can have three or four of those in the forest firing at a convoy, you're probably going to kill two or three units. If those units are more than 60 points and you lose all your 45 or 60 point like worth of vehicles if you have three or four, it's definitely worth using. So then we have the XA-180... Oh, the the Psyon... I cannot... I text about to Psyon with 12 ITOs... Uh, this is this reminds me of the Canadian uh, tow launchers. 12 ITOs with 2625, 60 accuracy, 20 AP power, very good off road speed. And then we have an upgrade over that, which is a 60 point XA185 Psyon with the 70% accuracy, 5 more HP AP power. 
and you get a volley, you have to, you can fire four before reloading, whereas this is like a one before reloading, I'm assuming. Um, oh yes, the Sturm E, or the Sturm 1, which is obviously, see? I totally forgot about this, but they're teasing it so hard, I'm telling you right now. I have just called it, and it's gonna happen. Why, I mean, why would you otherwise be including a five-point stug? I'm not kidding. This is going to be a thing in Wargame, World War II Wargame. I know, they know we want it, and we know that they obviously want to make money. They're a company, you know, they gotta make, like, sandwiches at the end of the day, too. I mean, they gotta, you know, pay their bills, too. I would pay $20 for a war game, World War II DLC. Hell, I'll probably pay more, but I shouldn't say that. But I'll play I'll pay 20 bucks for a war game, World War II DLC. You got a Stug, you got Hellcats, you got Jacksons, you got the MP44 models, MP40 models, Thompson's models, you got the Car 98 models, you got the SMG42 models, you got certain uh, planes, you got well Sabres aren't World War II, actually, I shouldn't say that. You have the Stug, you have what I just showed, uh, where was it? You have the, where was it, where was it, where was it? You have the PPSH model. I mean, you're not even halfway there, maybe like 5% there, but I don't know. I just really want it to happen. I'm sorry. Um, it actually is, it even has a DT, they even have the DT model, the DT 7.62 model. They have the, Jesus Christ, man. It's, it's not gonna happen. I'm getting really mad. I don't know why they would put this in. I mean, it looks cool. But if they're not going to do anything World War II related, I don't see why you would put the Stug in. But it looks really, really, really cool. And I I can see have I can see some interesting things here where you take this and, you know, make like a defense against T-3485s, which I also forgot to mention are obviously in the game, T-3485s. So you can have a T-3485 versus Storm uh, Geschutz fucking showdown now in the game. The Terra Musti, which has a 95 millimeter heat rocket that looks so weird. That picture looks very weird compared to. Oh, it's just a. It's a uh, recoilless rifle. To a. Ooh, it's got HE power. It's got very good AP power. It's only 10 points. It's got 20 shots. It's it's amphibious. This is a very interesting unit. Put this in a tree line. And they don't know what's going on. And you're going to destroy someone, probably. And then we have the UAZ Pistol. Pistoy, Pistoy, with 15 points, Faggot, 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 and missiles, 2450 range, 40 accuracy, 16 AP power, but this thing, that's, that's actually pretty baller, I'm not gonna lie, HE power of 2 as well, at that range, with 20, 20 rounds, Attack a town with these things or have these like put these like in the trees next to a town to defend it And you can destroy infantry from like long range where they can barely see you or hit you Moving on to helicopter of the HH-10 which is a little bird with four tow two missiles Pretty good pretty, no, Down size you got low ammo count, but these are very good missiles good stabilizer very good AP power 260 speed 2 in and out in and out in and out just lots of reloading the MA M-I-A-T with lots of rockets, standard chopper for almost any red formation. And then the M-I-8-T-K-T, which has a, ooh, which has the twin 23 mil gun pods with, oh my god, that's insane fire. It's, it's, that's just going to blast away some people's fucking faces. Interesting. That's a close uh, support gunship at 280 kilometers an hour. Moving on to area of the... Oh, <gasps> I had, I saw this and had to sneeze really badly. We actually have a baby nuke bomber with one 1,500 kilogram bomb and uh, no armor though. That sucks. This reminds me a lot of the B5N or what is this called? The North Korean bomber, the nuke bomber. Isn't it the B5? Yeah, the B5. That this is a Finnish B5. That's awesome. Uh, 110 points, you can get a card, uh, one card of two train, that's actually pretty good. I mean, what do you want? It's a new bomber, come on. It's even got some, uh, I thought it said ECM, okay, it's got 15 strength, which is 10, so it's, it's got a little bit of a, 
well, it's got a little bit more armor than most than like other planes. Then we have the CM-170 with two M-Class missiles. It reminds me of one of the Swedish planes I used to see in Ireland battle a lot in the, one of the campaigns. 35 accuracy, I mean, 35 stabilizer. I don't know what you want to do with this. You can take two elites and bump up the stats to 32 accuracy, so you get 67% accuracy. Still a bad stabilizer, though. But, I mean, for 60 points... It's probably gonna be more effective than some of the other planes that have. Let's take a look. This is oh god, it's one of those fat fucks again. A big single 30 mil right underneath the canopy. Two Monias AA, but they're pretty terrible, and two bombers. This is a light bomber. I'd preferably take this over this. Because this is gonna do shit. This is gonna do like worse. Even though it's got nine hundred 150 turn radius. That's the thing of this wing. And that, that's the thing of this plane. This thing has 300, but it's got 900 kilometer an hour speed. So it's even got 10 ECM. So I don't know. Do you want to bomb shit? Do you want to gack shit with, uh, with AT launchers? That's the thing. Then the J R J 35 S, which looks like a Draken. I never liked these planes. I think they're stupid. It's got four very weird looking missiles. The RB27 Falcon. It's only 85 points, but super terrible accuracy, super terrible stabilizer. You can get four veteran though at 24 accuracy, so you bump it up to 59, but even then I don't really see a point. We got two good AA missiles for choppers though, and good speed at 900 kilometers an hour. Then the J35F, which has six 500 kilogram napalm bombs, still has, you know, 900 kilometers an hour. I mean, it's got no, like, helicopter defense weapons or anything. But, I mean, it, I, I guess it looks kind of cool with all those bombs underneath it. Holy shit. Um, and then we have the J-35FS. Oh, my God. Which is, like, one of the worst ones. This is this is why I would take this thing over this thing. Two terribly shit RB-28, you know, anti-helicopter rockets. And you get these stupid sprung rockets, which are um, for... Ground targets. They're big rockets at 135 millimeter, but I don't. Uh, I just, I just think it's stupid. 900 kilometers an hour, though. If I care, if you care about that, then the MiG 21 F 13. A little bit more speed than the J 35 FS. It's got uh, smaller rockets, but it's got more of them. And it's got 10 ECM over 0% ECM, so you got a little bit more leeway. A lot bigger turn radius, though. It's kind of an issue. Uh, you know, it's got the, the standard 23mm autocannon, but... Finnish Air Force is not really impressing me at the moment, so far, anyway. It's got the Molnia, the second one, the mix one one BIS, has the Molnia rockets, but it's got four of them, but they're not that great, accuracy-wise. And you got two Abe 9s, so this is like the... When there's no enemy air, this thing can just fly in, get and harass helicopters until it runs out of ammo, and then you'll probably get down maybe two or three. 1,000 kilometers speed, 30 ECM, uh, 350 turn radius is a bit big, but no, it's not 500 anyway. Um, and it's just being interesting. I could see it being interesting, but it's not a unit I would take if I have other stuff to take. Let's see, we have the MiG-29. 9.13 with oh it's only got two Vimpel missiles why does it why does it only have two why not give it four i mean it's a cheaper plane 1000 speed 40 ecm though I mean, we can get one card of two elites which puts it up to 92 accuracy which is actually not that bad but still only two missiles that's not that great for a 120 point plane and then the F-18C, I don't know why the Americans don't get this, but they do get this. The Finnish get access to the F-18C, which is glitching out a little bit. The F-18C has AIM-9 missiles for anti-helicopter duty mainly, and six AMRAMs. You can get two rookies or one elite. So my thing would be, do this... It's a lot of points, but you get three planes. You can have these two act as like the bait-ish things, and then have the more expensive plane, the F-18C, come in and swoop down with the 60 accuracy, 7,700 meters, like these uh, William Pels, but you do have the ability to fire six of them, so together you can fire 10 missiles from three planes. 
that's pretty interesting. 50 ECM on this F-18C with a, a thousand kilometers. That's that's actually pretty good. It's got bad bad turning radius though. That's the downside. But it's got a lot of time the time of targets. Almost two, almost three minutes, two and a half minutes. That's actually a long time. And then last but not least, obviously, let's go back to, oh, let's delete this. Let's go back to the infantry tab where I'm going to make the biggest fool out of myself. We have the M39. It's just a mostly the gun. I'm telling you, it, it's going to, mark my words, what I said, you can pull it up in five, six months from now. And it'll be like, oh yeah, Shermanator fucking said it was gonna happen. They have a fucking M39. This is basically a Mosi Nagant with a Strela 2M, which is absolutely trash. But hey, it's only five points. So for 10 points, you can get yourself a nice A. Well, I say nice. You can get yourself sort of an AA launcher. It's absolutely trash. It's not gonna hit shit. You only got six missiles. So with that accuracy, maybe two out of six will hit. And that's even kind of pushing it. Um, you can get these though in the BTR-60P, the XA-180, the XA-185K, the BTR-50, the BMP-1, the BMP-2, which is good, and the MA-8P, MA-8P. This is a BMP-2, is actually an interesting unit. What you can do, you can get these fucks, oh my god, wait, you can get one card of 14 hardened, which you're paying 25 points. So you can get the AA, you push them in a building somewhere, you group them up and let's say you buy two of them. So you group them in two in, in sets of two. So you get 12 missiles per group and they're only five points. So they're 10 points if you lose them. It's absolutely nothing. But then you have two BMP2s at your disposal with 30 millimeter auto cannons. So that's almost something I would invest in doing, just getting one of these for 14 hardened. Then the Ito 6086M. Yeah, see, that's a five point versus 20 point unit. Let's compare these two very quickly. The They still have the Mosin Nagant. For some reason, they still like having them. But they are a 1994 unit, okay? But they have the Igla N, you know, very useful missile. We see this in lots of other Red Fur nations where it's 55 accuracy, 24, 50 meters. Very good missile compared to the Strela, but 20 points versus five. So I almost feel like you can get one, uh, two of these hardened versus this. I almost would take this, especially if you take them in BMP2s. Then the... I'm going to rip your language. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Finland. The Giacari, which is regular infantry from the seven, from the 75th year, from 1975, sorry. RK-62s, M-72 laws, and the KK-62s. This is pretty terrible. 30 accuracy, 13 AP power. Um, it's... I mean... I believe territorials under the British are better than this. Their AT is probably the same, if not better than this. You can get them in the standard transports. Then the 90s, though, they look actually a lot cooler in that picture, but these guys look pretty bland. Their helmets look kind of weird. Um, they get the upgrade. Let's take a look. They're actually the same cost. Okay, they're the exact same unit. The only difference is the fact that your launcher has... Three more AP power and 10% more range. So the standard line infantry for Finland is these Jakari, which is pretty trash. Um, they also don't get a good, well, the only good vehicle is this one. So for 25 points, you get a good transport with shit infantry, I guess. That's what you'd be going for there. Then we have the Kaartin Jakari. These guys look like butchers, if anything. These guys look really insane. Get them in the Musti. Ooh. Wait, what? That is awesome. That is actually a really cool unit with the Musti on top. You can get them in the KRKK, which reminds me of the Japanese paratroopers, actually, because they have the um, same idea with the, where they put a 40 mil on their vehicle. Low accuracy, bad stabilizer, but you can just put it in a town that, or like near a town on the outside and just have it lob grenades in. Um, and the M-A-I-P, M-A, M-I-A-P, it's actually a hard thing to say. But these guys come with the Suomi, KP, the Law, RPD. So, 25 points, but these guys are, are motorized commandos, I'm assuming, because they are, they do come with motorized, and they're under shock, trained, 15-man squad. So, these guys are town clearers, very short-range RPG a CQC machine gun and SMGs, which means put them in there. These are like the um, Wachtschutze, 
Wachtregiments from East Germany. Push them into town, and then you'll just push them in the same house, and they'll destroy them. 15 men large, shock train, and a CQC RPD. Moving on to the Nostoveki, which I've actually seen them showing, uh, I've actually seen these shown off in the live stream that they did. It's got, it's basically a recoilless rifle. I've seen this thing also, again, the Lati was a Finnish anti-tank rifle in World War II, I believe. And they used this thing with great success. Great success. Um, 1225 meters. It's got two AP power. It's absolutely terrible, but it's still going to destroy light transports. And it has one HE power, so you can use this thing as like basically like a sniper. They're only 10 points. They're actually militia trained. Hmm. Their vehicle has come, yeah, it comes with NSVT. Don't really know. I mean, you can have these on the outside of a town as like an early warning or as an artillery target for the enemy. Um, because they are going to piss people off. With that range, you can outrange every infantry unless they have a Lorcora's rifle of their own or unless they have a sniper. Well, actually, a sniper doesn't out... No, a sniper... No, the only thing you can engage infantry with outside of that range is a is another recordless rifle. This is actually pretty good. Um, HT power of one, yeah, forge suppression. But their militia, they're also really slow. So, well... It's kind of like, what do you want? Do you want to put these guys in your deck for 29 trained? I don't know. I don't... I mean... 8 accuracy for the... Yeah, well... What do you want? You had 100 rounds, though. So you can destroy infantry with this with impunity. Because you're not going to have to resupply this anytime soon. Then we have the Panzari... Jesus. I'm assuming Jakari means infantry or something. Panzari, ja Panzari Jakari, which means armored infantry... I'm again assuming of the 1975 version with the KK62. Wait, did you guys have a CQC machine gun? No, okay. The KK62 CQC version of the machine gun, the Raika RPG, they're shock trained and they come in the BMP2, BMP1, and these uh, vehicles, which I've taken a look at multiple times already. For five, 25 points, you get these guys though. Good accuracy on the RPG, good AP-ish power, low range though, but they're shock trained. And then the 90s version, oh my god, are you kidding me? Gets the Apilas again, which means more range, way more AP power, and a higher rate of fire by 100%, which is insane. That's awesome. That's it is, oh no, never mind, the rockets, the amount of rockets is the same. Moving on to the... Pistoia 82M, which is a concourse team. We have these in 82 and 94 versions. We have the Pistoia with the concourse 2625, 45 accuracy, 20 AP power. I mean, they're just your standard line in, like, you know, line infantry in TGMs. You can actually get those in, like, the standard transport. And then we're moving on to the Pistoi 94, which has the Spike MR launcher. Uh, obviously, I think I've seen those under the Israelis. 65 accuracy, 21 AP power. That's actually pretty damn good. Um, I mean, they do only have six shots, though, which is kind of the issue with ATGM teams, in my opinion. You, they either have to die after those six shots, or you have to resupply them, which might not always be the smartest way or, like, easiest way because I usually try to keep these guys kind of stealthy on hold fire until I really want them to fire at something that's interesting to fire upon then the last three we're gonna take a look at these in a second because I think these are the coolest ones let's go to the Ruskan Jesus Christ Ruskasin Korima Ruskasin Korimia I'm really raping your language I'm so sorry these have the Man transportable Musti, which that's an actual big thing to have on your back. Jesus Christ. That's a Rakotis rifle, 40 accuracy, 16 AP power. It's really good. 2 HE power and a range of 1400, which is centered um, our, our, our Rakotis rifle range. It's only down to that it's got these rifles instead of SMGs. Um, 15 points, a regular train, so not militia. I mean, I guess if you don't want to take these militia dudes, you just take the. Uh, Raskasin Korimia, Korim word thing. Then we have the Ran, oh my god, the Raniko Jakari, which is the Finnish airborne. Their 75 squad comes with a Raika and the KK 62. 
in these kind of standard transports by now. And then we have the 90s version, which, oh my god, yes. Comes with the Apilas and the Valmet M68, which I... This picture is obviously not correct, but I've never heard of that gun. Um, oh, I'm looking at the wrong gun, sorry. And that means... Let me actually pin these and then click on these guys. Which makes it have Apilas, which obviously has better range, more AP power, double the uh, rate of fire, they're elite. Um, and they can come in the Super Puma and in the MI8P. So they're a pretty expensive infantry unit. Do you want to bring them in the Super Puma for speed or the MI8P for, I think, more strength, right? Yeah, strength or speed. That's kind of the thing you're going off here. The gun is the exact same. Points are the same. Just do you want to bring them in on a big size helicopter with eight strength or a medium with six strength, you know, have like them, I guess you want to have speed, unless you know you're going to get shot at or figure out you're going to be shot at, but that was um, a very interesting nation. I must say, I I really, I really need to get my friends together and play some more war game with them because I love war game. Like, don't get me wrong. I should really annoy Vulcan and be like, yo, babe, come on, let's play something, some, let's play some more war game. I really like War Game, and like I said, mark my words, 2017, they're going to have to tease something of World War II Armor 3, or what's not Armor 3, World War II War Game. It has to happen, whether it's a game, which I doubt, or a DLC slash mod given out by Eugen, which will have World War II as the main thing, where you're actually going to be basically Ruse 2.0 but hopefully in more game. For now, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to see awesome, and I would love to see you guys in the next one. Cheers.